بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لن ترضى أنك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى ولا إن اعتبعت أهواءهم بعد الذي جاءك من العلم ما لك من الله من ولي ولا نصير رب الشحل صدر ويسل أمري وأهل العقدة من لسان يفكه قولي أمين يا رب Today inshallah I'm going to share with you uh, the current situation and understanding something new and also understanding a verse of the Quran that is uh, a, that was and has now come true a prophecy from the Quran and uh, usually when I have explained this ayah in the Quran, I've showed it from one dimension, but today I'm going to show it from another dimension, meaning I'm going to add a new dimension to it. So inshallah ta'ala will benefit. Uh, it will benefit you if you've been hearing me from before because it's a new dimension. I want to talk about something that is happening in Al-Aqsa and happening in the Hindu world and some of its connections with the Quran. Okay, And what does this mean for us in the future? Okay, so now let us uh, understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is talking about uh, four groups of people. Uh, the Jews, the Zionists, the pagans, the Christians, the believers, and the believers who pretend to be believers. So five groups of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about five groups of people in ayah number 81 and 82. Allah is talking about the uh, Zionists and the pagans, the Hindus. Allah is talking about the Christians, the believers, and then the hypocrites amongst the believers. And ayah number 81 is talking about the hypocrite leaders of the Muslims. And the rest of the four groups are discussed in ayah number 82. So now, with this in mind, let us take a look at the verse of the Qur'an. Definitely, 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 this lam taqid and noon shadda. You know, this, people who know basic Arabic, Arabic 101, they know that this is for emphasis. The word is tajida, you will find. La tajidanna, you will definitely find. And then another word of emphasis, ashadda. You know, shadid means severe. Ashadda, the most severe. Kabir, akbar. Kabir, big. Akbar, the biggest one. Okay. La, la tajidanna, you will definitely, definitely, definitely find most severe. It will be severe. Not just moderate, not just lightly. Ashaddan nas. Adawatan. Most severe in showing hatred. Over here, I want to show you something. There are four terms in the Quran that mean hatred or to have an enemy. Okay. In Shani Akahul Aftar. Shana'ani Qawmin. That's two. Then Baghda. Baghda is that who whom you have you're angry with them. Okay. Then Adawatun. Adawatun is that type of uh, enemy that plans against you. Inna lakum aduwu mubin. Indeed, the shaitan is your adu. He is a planner against you. He, he is happy when something bad happens to you. And he is sad when something good happens to you. And he plans against you. Okay? وَلَا تَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ You will find the most severe of planning against you. For against you meaning لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا To the people who they... These are the two groups of people. They're happy when something bad happens to Muslims. And these are people who plan against the Muslims. And they just don't only plan nas They're the most severe and serious. And you will find this in the future that these two groups of people will be most severe against the people who believe, really believe. And the pagans. 
And you will also find just as much as you find them being your enemies, you will find another group having the opposite uh, relationship with the believers. But over there, there's two. And over here, there's one. Over there is adawatan lilladina amanu al yahuda wal ladina ashraku. Okay? The Yahud and people that are pagans. And who are the pagans? That is the Santa Claus Christianity that believes in Trinity. And that is the Hindus. And you will find most near. Mawaddatan. They have mawadda. They have wood. The name of Allah, al-wudud. They have love. They show compassion. They care. لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا For the true ones that believe. الَّذِي قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى Those who say we're not Judeo-Christian. We're not Jews and Christians. We don't associate with Judeo-Christian civilization. We are just Christians. And they will be a civilization that has ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ قِسِّيسِينَ This is because they have priests. وَرُحْبَانَ And monks. وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ And because they're not proud. But there's another group. And that is mentioned in the ayah before. That if you had believed in what Qur'an says, you would have followed the Qur'an. But because your situation is the situation mentioned in ayah number 81, it seems like the Qur'an is saying you don't really believe in the Qur'an. وَلَوْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالنَّبِيِّ If they had believed in Allah, and in his Prophet really believed. وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ And whatever has been revealed to him in this Qur'an, مَا مَتَّخَذْتُمْ You would have not taken for your protectors and for your helpers and for your allies, awliya, you wouldn't have taken them, meaning other than what Allah. You wouldn't have taken your own enemies as your protectors. You wouldn't be normalizing relationships with others. You wouldn't be trying to face make your qibla in your sujood to the White House. But what is the situation of the Muslims today? They're facing, they're doing sujood not only as a country. They're doing sujood. And over here I'll mention something. How do you know which country is doing sujood? And which departments within the country are doing sujood to another country? I'll tell you how you can tell. That when you are importing their soap, when you can make your own soap. Because you want their soap. When you are importing basic things. Basic things that you can grow and make in your own country, yet you want the bigger brand. Then you are doing sujood to them. You love them. You're not okay with having your own brand of shoes, you want their shoes. You're not okay with having your brands and your styles of dress, you want their dress. You're not okay with whatever small car you can make, small brand of car you can make. No, I have to have a Mercedes. I need to import Mercedes for my ministers and for my army colonels and for my generals. When all departments of a nation are Im- wanting to import things from their masters. Then they have done sujood to them. And they have become friends with the enemies. This is what normalization means. Normalization means what? That you like them and you want their stuff. You want their dunya. You want dunya from the perspective of what they have. You're not content with, okay, we'll just make our own shoes. Maybe it won't be as good as theirs, but it'll be our own. We'll make things in our own factories, but no, I need to have something from, I need their computers. You can't make your own computers. You can't make your own pins. You can't make your own shoes. You can't make your own clothes. Why do you need to import all of this? The more you import from your masters and from the, from the, from the West, Or, in the case of Pakistan, if you're importing from India. You need to import. And then with business comes what? The culture. 
the cultural domination. With the cultural domination comes the intellectual domination. With the intellectual and cultural domination comes the financial dom domination and the political domination. Now, in this light, read this ayah now. وَلَوْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالنَّبِيِّ If they really had believed in Allah and His Prophet, وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ And whatever we, we, had, we had revealed to our Nabi Muhammad وسلم, مَا اتَّخَذْتُمْ أَوْلِيَا You wouldn't have taken them as your friends. Who is Allah telling us not to take as friends? Everyone should know. وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرْ كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ But the truth is, most of them, they're just rebellious. They're rubbish and garbage. And when you see this happen, when you see the Muslims have become weak because they have been betrayed in their own house, then you will find the most severest amongst the human beings in planning against true Islam not the fasiqeen Islam, the ones that are importing everything and want the, the glitter and the zina and the dunya and their shoes and their jewelry and their clothes and their brand names. Those that will plan against you. For the people who believe Islam will be planned against. And they will target the believers. And you will have to leave the cities like Ashab al Kahf. Who are behind these plans? Allah is pointing to two groups of people, which is now coming true. Don't tell me I'm racist or sexist. Why did you let these verses come true? And you will find at that time, Allah is telling you where to turn. Where you should be turning. You should be turning in a different direction to the people that are not godless. But you should be turning to the God-fearing people. Even if they're not Muslims, but they're God-fearing. They have, they care about their state of heart. They care about if they're arrogant or not. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The Jews and the Christians, they'll never be happy with you. Who, who have become one? Those, because, Until you follow their millah. Until you follow their one way. It doesn't say millatan. Until you don't follow their way. But their hum is millah, one millah. And Allah is there, gave you guidance, don't you see? The guidance is the guidance Allah gave. Where are you turning? Why are you turning in that direction? Why are you not turning towards my guidance? And O Prophet, and by that, us, the Ummah of Muhammad, if you follow their desires, after I've given you knowledge, don't do this. Then the punishment will come. You will find Allah will not be your wali. And Allah will not be your helper at that time. Why? You betrayed Allah's book and His messenger. When Allah is telling you not to find help in this direction. And these very same people who say what? Who say, Be part of the Judeo-Christian civilization. You'll be given guidance. This is the way to go. No. Not the godless way, but the way of Ibrahim. He was not an idol worshipper. So, so has the time come? Where you see clear planning against Muslims by the Zionists. And you see clear planning against the Muslims by the Hindutwa, the Hindus, the pagans. So let's take a look at this video that 
I have here. This obviously you know that this happened recently. All of you have all seen the pictures. But I just want to make the point and you can just watch this. And this has been happening every year. This is Adawatun. Making Muslims lay down in Ramadan, every Ramadan, arresting them, causing problems for them, harassing them. They're inside the Masjid al-Aqsa. And they don't care. They don't care. About, they hate you. They're, they hate you. So, what happened in short is the Jews approved for the Jews to go over for doing their things. Muslims didn't like it. And then they obviously they were expecting that to some degree and then they overreacted and overhurt the Muslims. And this happens every year. See, the people of Palestine, they know. They know that what plans they have. They know how they've been digging there. They see their attitude. They feel their attitude. They're living there. And they're telling the Muslim world, they're not up to any good, but the Muslim world wants to do what? Normalization with who? With those that are actually planning against you. You're making friends on the wrong side. Of course, no one's going to raise any voice like Ukraine here. No one's going to say, oh, the poor people of Palestine helped them. Where is the world fury when it comes to this? Silence. Silence. Because why? There's an agenda. Let's continue, inshallah, on this. We were praying in the mosque. Suddenly, the soldiers uh, get in the mosque without any alert. They started to uh, uh, shoot the boy. Uh, bombs and uh, there are many dozens of injured dozens of uh, people who were injured from the bomb here and the bullets it's it's amazing uh, this is a praying place not for a uh, fight so this is breaking down a people may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect al-aqsa and what is around it and give more iman and more courage to the Palestinian Muslim brothers who are now being betrayed by the rest of the Ummah slowly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them courage. I wanted to say a few words about Mufti Mink and the whole event that happened, especially in the and, and you know, anyway, I'm going to refrain from saying something. 
one thing about that I really want to share, and I want somebody to make this like really an important subject that they study, and that is that the real Temple Mount is actually over here, where the red, uh, you can say, the this you see where Masjid Aqsa is here, where Aqsa Masjid here is, is wait, actually the Roman fort. The Prophet would never pray in someone else's masjid or in somebody else's play, place of worship. The western wall is north, is, uh, you know, the north, on the north, and the actual temple, okay? The actual temple is south of that. It's in the city of David. And it still has garbage in it. Just like if you read the narrations of Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu an, he said that the, 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 the Haikal al-Sulaymani, the temple of the Jews, was in the place where there's garbage. That is the city of David. Okay, This area here is where it's supposed to be. But they are focusing on building it here where Masjid al-Aqsa is. And somebody needs to do some deep research on this. And uh, I've posted my videos on this issue too. But somebody needs to really study this and bring this out to the world. Okay, Because this is a big, big forgery and a lie and a hoax that's being done to convince even the Muslims that this is where the Temple Mount is. This is not where the Temple Mount is. This is a square place, if you've ever been there, okay, it's a fort, okay? And uh, for, uh, you know, for my Christian brothers and sisters, you should remember what Jesus said, there will be not a single stone left of the Temple. So how are these, this the wailing wall there with thousands of rocks? So even it's in the Bible. You can look it up yourself. What did Jesus say about the stones of the temple? How they'll they'll be all finished. They'll be all gone. Just as the Quran says, We would destroy the temple of the Jews with complete destruction. There was no there was no wailing wall left. So that's something I'm just pointing to over here right now. So it says a history lesson for the UN. Okay. They're now trying to prove the Temple Mount is where Al-Aqsa is supposed to be or to the, a little bit to the south, to the north of that. Okay, This complete rubbish has absolutely no historical basis. There was a, I don't have time right now to go into this. There was a rabbi, because Jews didn't know. They hadn't been to their city in such a long time until the Muslims allowed them to go in. They were not allowed during the times of the Christians when the Byzantine Empire was there. Then when the Muslims allowed them, they still didn't know, they knew this is the city. They didn't know where Haikal al-Sulimani was. Until a rabbi who used to do magic said, Oh, I had this inspiration. It must be, oh, it's, this is the big structure. This is, this is where the Muslim Aqsa must be where it is. Absolute rubbish. No basis whatsoever in history. So now they've been plotting against you to build a temple where they have no basis for building a temple. And the more unfortunate thing is that even Muslims have bought into the fact that this is the place where the temple was. No, it was not here. And Muslims would never do that. And Prophet Muhammad would never pray in a place and build a masjid of his where someone else has their mosque or their own prayer place or their temple. Okay, so and the evidence shows that. So when the Romans were there at the time of Isa alayhi this was their temple, this big place where now Masjid Aqsa is, called the Antonia Fortress. And it's they write on Temple Mount. Okay, This is where Al-Aqsa is. The temple inside, this now this goes down. This is actually mentioned a few times. This place in the middle is mentioned in some important places in the Bible. I'm not going to go into that. But the Temple Mount was to the south. And Al-Aqsa is over here in the middle, okay? It's in the city of David where there is the Gihan Spring. Uh, but I'll talk about that later, inshallah. Here's another a picture, okay? This is where Al-Aqsa is today, okay? And this was the fort of the Roman soldiers in the time of Isa alayhi And this is actually where, uh, away from Masjid Al-Aqsa, where the temple was, Okay? And it fits the, the description of the temple given in the Bible when you look at it from here. Okay. So, anyway. So, the reason I say this, okay, and this is the Bridge of the Red Heifer for those who know about that. Okay. So, the reason I mention this is why? 
is to tell you that when when somebody thinks or when somebody's been told a lie or they're told we're going to build our mount our temple in this place where the masjid is where the prophet did mi'raj they that's what they want for I'm not going to go into the reasons of that but they want this special place where they can do magic because it has it has a you can say uh, some things there that are of very great significance when the Prophet went to Miraj. Okay? And uh, so they want that and they want to build their temple there. Why do they want to build their temple there? They want to build their temple because of that special thing that I've, I'm just pointing to what it, something about it. But then they have to plan and they have to plan against how we're going to bring Masjid Aqsa down and then they have to build their temple there. This is what they want to do. Okay, let's move forward, inshallah. Here's another picture. This is where the actual temple is, and this is where Masjid Aqsa is today. Okay, and that's the western wall where they've been praying at the wrong place. Okay, and this is where, it actually says it here, steps where the Apostle Paul addressed the angry mob. So that was right here in the middle. And he ran into the fortress, and everybody knows this. Okay. And then a group of Hindus, just like a group of Jews, a group of Hindus who have made religious nationalism. And that's something I wanted to talk about today, but I might not have time. But the other group, the pagans, who, just like in the time of the Prophet, there was an alliance between the pagans and the hypocritical Jews. Planning against the Muslims? Well, so too today. So too today. The same has been happening now. And so, not only against Muslims, also against Christians and Sikhs, they want, they believe India is a greater India. Okay? They believe just Israel believes in greater Israel. India believes in a greater Isra India. And they believe all of, and I'm going to show you uh, in a second. But let's just listen to this and then. Christians in India are speaking out about a rash of attacks being committed against their pastors, churches, and evangelists. At least 100 incidents have occurred so far this year. One shocking assault was recently captured on videotape by an Indian camera crew. Gary Lane has the story. <laughs> Pastor Walter Massey is attacked by young Hindu militants following a recent prayer meeting in his home. He cries out to the Lord as he is bludgeoned with wooden clubs. Jesus! Radicals also destroy some of Pastor Massey's possessions. The assault is videotaped by a television camera crew, which does nothing to halt the attack. Pastor Masih's seven-year-old daughter, Hepzibah, is traumatized. Masih... How sad. Okay, then let's continue, inshallah, to the next video here. This is, this is a video of a Muslim. I guess he went to the village by mistake of these Hindus. Now they're not letting him go until he claims their shahada, says... You know, uh, the great Ram, uh, you know, I don't want to say the words, they're shirk, words of shirk, they're praising the idol. Okay. So then now, now they're like, how dare you come to our village? He's like, I came here by mistake or he made some trade transaction. Now they're harassing him. These are what the Hindu fundamentalists are doing. And I'm going to show you in a second what they believe in. <laughs> So this is the Muslim brother with the Kufi, right? And he's trying to be nice, but obviously he's going to get ganged up. So what is he going to do? He said, how dare you come to our village? You, we're going to take you to the hellfire. He's like, I'm sorry I made a mistake. He's like, how did you earn in this village? How'd you come and make a trade in this village? He's like, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I won't come back, or something like this. 
So they're saying, you know, say these words of shirk, otherwise we're not going to let you go. So, uh, you know, there was a police report and so on and so forth. But what do these people believe? You know, what do they believe that is in common with the uh, Zionists? So he's upset. Why is there a mosque in every street? Why every facility, 20% for Muslims, give this and give that? We're, we're upset because they keep appeasing, meaning the government and the officials, and they're appeasing the Muslims. Why? So if they're being beaten up, and Muslims are being beaten up, they're told you can't wear hijab and all these things happen, then, you know, people are upset that why do they get this free ride of, you know, why do they get to open up a masjid in every, uh, every place? So he's talking about greater India. Okay, I'm going to explain it to you in a second when the other person comes because this person is very hard for me to understand. He says, we've come to take control of every religion in every place. Many, many, country, many countries were part of India. So he's talking about the greater India. So he's like showing different maps of what India was actually like in history. Before this was all part of India, Pakistan's part of India, portions of Afghanistan are part of India, Bangladesh. So this is their greater vision. The, this is the government that's actually in control right now. That's very anti-Muslim and anti-Sikh, anti-Christian, right? India gets bigger and bigger. The more we go back in history, he says. He says it's a very wrong definition to say only this is India, what we have today. Okay. In fact, uh, let me go ahead and see if I can show you. This is the Union of Greater India. Okay, And this is what the fundamentalists uh, amongst them, they believe. And you all know the idea of Greater Israel, right? So, now, one thing that, I don't know if it has meaning or not, but if you look at the map of Greater Israel and the map of Greater India, and you put them together, it's almost like they come together like a piece of puzzle. Okay. There is some gap there, but uh, they want to also take over Iran. So Iran is going to be uh, probably gone because we know in the future the the army, some of the armies of the Jan will be coming from Iran. So there is this like map where these two come together. Okay, and so uh, a similar mentality thinks similarly. So they're thinking Greater Israel. They're thinking Greater India. It's religious nationalism. Religious nationalism. And what happens with religious nationalism is the religion of the majority oppresses the minorities. And whereas Islam is that religion that even if we're the majority, we don't oppress the minorities. This has to be a fundamental difference and a fundamental principle by which we have to correct ourselves in the wrongs we have done in history and make sure we don't do them wrong in the future. This has to be. This is the the main one of the you can say uh, if there is a Islamic republic of any sort that oppresses its minorities, ooh, that would make the Prophet so angry, so angry. You should read the Hadith in Sahih Bukhari about the Pro. I will side with the Dhimmi on the Day of Judgment. Is what the Prophet said in Sahih Bukhari. I will be on the side of the Dhimmi on the Day of Judgment. And so, 
we have to be very careful not to make their mistakes, but at the same time, understand their mistakes so we don't do the same and understand what we have to correct from our past. Just because we're in the majority. Religious nationalism is taking over the whole world. This is what happened with Trump. This is happening in India. This is happening in Israel. This is happening all over the place. Religious nationalism. But it is a religious nationalism that can go in the right direction or in the wrong direction. In a direction of holier than thou or in a direction of let's be humble. Not a nationalism of arrogance where you suppress the weak. So anyway, that I'm just saying as a side point and just to that side point, I will also say to show you how important the temple is to the Jewish people. Uh, I'm I'm showing you from this site called templemount.org. It says, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Like, how can we be outside Jerusalem in a foreign land and sing the Lord's song about Jerusalem? How can we be singing about Jerusalem in a foreign land and not be in Jerusalem? Okay. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her sk her skill. Meaning, Jerusalem, if I forget about Jerusalem, then my hand that makes whatever it makes, skill, boots, sandals, whatever, carpenter, whatever skill I have with my right hand, may that right hand forget its skill if I forget about Jerusalem. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Meaning, put me in a situation I can't even speak. If I forget you, O Jerusalem. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. So yearnings for the third temple. Okay, so I want you to understand how much this type of nationalism, the religious nationalism and nationalism, this type of uh, Zionism, how much this is part of their belief system. And now part of Santa Claus Christianity and uh, Judaism has merged in this. So, I end with doing du'a together with you, inshallah ta'ala. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, increase awareness, and let the like-minded like people join hands. This is the most important thing of the time, to form a jama'ah so you can do hijrah. Like-minded people have to come together. Without that, like without like-minded people coming together, nothing can be done. And so like, subscribe, and share this with your friends, inshallah ta'ala. And let's end with a dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Muslims of India. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Muslims in Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Muslims everywhere. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase awareness. And as we increase awareness, let us Allah make us like-minded people come together to form a jama'ah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in our time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to make hijrah when it will be necessary and to make it successful and accepted by Him. So, Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen. So, inshallah, I end over here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.